Hello, welcome to Floor Models kit review time. Today we've got Tamiya's. This is the Red Bull Racing RB6. Okay, and now I know it's not a massively new kit, but it's something I'm planning on doing in the summer. So I thought we'd have a look in the review because we've never reviewed an F1 car by Tamiya before. So as you can see, lovely box art on the front. There's no mistake in the old uh, Red Bull colours, as you can see down there. So it's the 120th scale. Uh, some of the details you can see in there, it's got the F-Duck system, it's going to be shown uh, and all the bits on there about the formula uh, in 2010 season. Um, it's in their collection number uh, for 120th scale Formula 1 cars, number 67 if you're into that one. The kit number itself is zero, uh, sorry, 20067, okay, for that case. And then down there, as in Mr. Webber's, which will be my ones. Colour call-outs, as I say, it's got the pearl blue, I don't know how close that will actually be to the actual right colour, but obviously the chrome yellow, chrome silver, and gloss black. So from a colouring point of view, it's pretty straightforward. Inside the box, <coughs> we can see, over there, as you can see, coloured plastic, never a fan of it, because we're gonna paint it anyway, but sometimes it is quite nice, because internally, at least you don't have to worry about it. So we've got a nice sealed in a rubber band, which is a little bit different. A couple of clear parts down there through here so we'll start off with the obligatory look through the instructions and all the other bits of which we've got quite a bit and in fact something I haven't seen before is here the decal sheet is stuck to the actual base itself it's actually hot glued in now I haven't seen that before but I do like that idea because many a time the decals as petty and silly as this sounds but they curl up they get caught around the edge during you know transportation and then you have a bit of a, a fight with them but anyway that is actually a quite a nice little touch so we'll make our way through these points and we'll have a look at those in a moment so down here we've got a thing obviously all about uh, Red Bull Racing as a team, we just drop this out just a fraction. There we go. Okay, Ooh. moving. And obviously, it's in Japanese, and then we've got the English and other languages down here, as you can imagine, right the way through. Talking obviously all about the racing, and then unfortunately, it's not in color, which would be a nice touch. But we have got obviously the positioning for all the decals going on this, and as we know, there is quite a few of those right the way through. And also, it talks about something we're going to look at at the moment, which is actually. Um, painting on using the stencil for the actual markings for Bridgestone on the tyres, okay, which is a nice touch. So the instructions themselves, typical uh, Tamiya way of doing things. So you've got your colour call outs down the bottom here and then straight in as we all know. So straight off the bat you're talking about you obviously got the cockpit area so we've got the steering wheel, loads of little bits of painting to go on down there as you can see for all the buttons and switches on the steering wheel and then obviously we've got the protection system to go around on the side of the driver and then the seat belts and harnesses which we'll have a look at in the moment to see how those go in and then into the seat the actual tub itself going in, some of those details going in there, colour callouts all the way through, and obviously we've got decal placements in as you go as well. Okay, carrying up on the top, obviously the top half of that one going through, finishing off uh, all those areas, and again, talking about putting in the actual markings as you make your way through the build, which is interesting because does this mean it's not going to work when it's together to get them in behind things? Something we're going to have to look carefully at when we go through the building stage to see if you can place them afterwards or if I'm imagining like here, it looks like it's going to be part of the, of the suspension system. So it'd be easy to have the deck one first then come in. So it may be a lot of sub assemblies after it's been painted. But again, that's something we'll look at during the building phase in a couple of months time. Suspension system going down, as you can imagine, all down in there and everything else. The braking system, and then just working through. So we've got the actual transmission and the engines uh, with the exhaust pipe systems going on there. And then I say more suspension, quite a bit. And down the back end, uh, the floor pan of the under tray going in. Okay, and then mounting out the actual engine um, transmission system going into that. Uh, again, it looks like we've got decals of carbon fibre on the side. Uh, the actual cooling systems being inserted and put on, and then the front half mating up to the actual the main uh, drivetrain uh, and the under tray. And then obviously we've got the all famous nose going on in there. Again, talking about decaling before assembly. So I'm assuming that's going to be a must. We'll look at the decals in a minute to see how they're positioned. But anyway, then we got all the lumps and bumps and the fairy bits that are going to go all over that front wing, fitting onto the actual vehicle. 
and then uh, the tyres, talking about the painting of the tyres which we've spoken about before but generally all of those tyres going on and then it's just a case of them coming on so we've got the engine cover going in there being then fitted on uh, a few other of uh, the actual like the barge bars and things like that going on the side the tail system down there for the rear wing uh, and all those areas so generally not too bad and i haven't seen it although i'll look in a minute apparently we've got a mountain plate with screws as well and then we get a helmet obviously we can display them i don't think we get a driver so we don't get a mr weber in it as i'll be doing it okay so the decals themselves which are in here heat of them I wanted to have a look at these because obviously something of this type of caliber you expect the decals to be nothing short of stunning and i have to say actually that isn't bad at all they are beautifully done how well the different cameras can pick up on that but they are beautiful thick lust colors and all the rest of it we have the actual uh, a decal for the harnesses we'll look at that again in a moment but generally we have got holes for things to be going in but as you can see down here trying to get this guy in and around things once it's together will be a real real headache uh, of actually getting that in but i should think we'll be uh, easier to do it and then put it together afterwards and going through and then obviously we've got mr weber's markings down there with the uh, high vis uh, for around the rear cap for the camera to spot the difference between the two okay so i must admit they look absolutely gorgeous then in here we're going to open this up we've got a little bit of a little bend in i think obviously and it is sealed so we'll just be a bit careful how we open this but down here we've got a little bit of wire if you can see this guy in here like this it's like a thin piece of piano wire in there I'm not sure where that went didn't i said that one and then what we're going to do is just open this up so i want to look at the harnesses and the various bits okay so down here this isn't fabric printed it's actually halfway to being a sticker and a decal I'm not sure even what it is we have a look I can't even get hold of this stuff it's gonna be I don't know actually perhaps it is a decal it feels too thick to be a decal it feels like it's a sticker I don't know I think we have to have a play with that I'm pretty sure it's vinyl yeah it's just it's a vinyl sticker okay so you can actually bend that around and put into it your actual uh, the metal parts for the harnesses which should be i'm hoping in here that's it so we've got these metal parts of the harnesses are going to go into the stickers now are they going to hold it permanently forever not too sure you might want to over glue as well just to make sure they're in there but whilst we're looking at it obviously we've got the uh, the actual harnesses and the release buckles and we've got this guy so you bend these little feet down each side of this so we've got the famous sort of bridgestone markings if you wanted to uh, so they'll be on your tires so you will actually airbrush those on now that'll be a bit of a challenge because obviously it's quite small and you want it to be in so you don't want to make your mix too wet otherwise it's going to run underneath you don't want it too dry because it'll look really horrible and textured so it'll be a little bit of playing with that one to actually make that work okay but generally very nice little touch down there a couple of other small bits of photo which we've got down here and we've got these guys which is that chromed um, sticker so it looks like wing mirrors and things like that which i do quite like if you didn't want to go down the actual route in uh, the actual photo etch for using it as a mask you've also got the uh you catch it on the camera you've actually got down here the uh you go, i'll show it a lot better now you can actually see we've got uh, decals so you could place them down as decals on there again i don't think decals will be any easier than spraying it on so um personal choice on that one but there we go i don't know what the piano wire was for but uh, we'll have a look at that so in the next bag of goodies which is this one these bags are really weird they're like rubber good quality bags we have the tires okay now obviously they're slicks in the days of slicks okay versus the more modern when you've got tread on there generally pretty nice all right you've got a center seam you're going to have to take care of so it's a little bit of old school on that side of things but generally they're very nice they um they feel right if you know what i mean i know it sounds stupid but a tire should be a tire they feel like a tire so down here we have various pins uh and various uh poly caps different sizes as we know is going to fit a lot of this on and um, we've got some nuts and bolts which i assume is for mounting it up to the, the stand itself so we've got those parts just like that okay now we can move into the plastic so 
This guy here, there's not a lot of point looking at. There's a couple of clear parts in there. Obviously, we don't have to worry about masking canopies. Okay, so right down here, very nicely molded. We have got some webbing, but we're not gonna see any of that in there. I'm just making sure it's not actually in, but generally seems to be all okay. You know, on something like this, there's not a lot to see. You're just basically making sure it's all okay. It's got a little few little nicks in it. Have you catch that one down there? Um, and everything else. But generally, I think that'll polish out and be okay. Gives you an idea of the scale of this. It's actually gonna be quite a lump once it's done. Not too keen on the colour of the plastic, uh, but I suppose it's a nice colour. You don't want to go too dark when you're spraying this on top. Okay, so there we go. We've got the sides for the intakes, the intakes themselves. We've got the strain system around the, the driver and all the areas. The front nose is in two halves. Okay, got some ejector pin marks down on the inside of the nose there. You can see that down there, which is not nice. So you'd need to sand that out really. This is gonna be a mirror finish. So you need to make sure all the areas are very nicely sanded and then polished and you know, primed over. So you've got a good finish on those. Okay, that looks pretty nice as you can see. No problem with that one. Okay, so in here we can see the front wing, the actual wheels themselves. Again, they're in the blue, which you're obviously going to paint silver, but uh, there we go. Again, we've got a lot of the fairing work, as you can see down here, uh, for the rear uh, wings down here, uh, as well in the parts and the helmet, who's got his visor closed and it's molded in one, which is a bit odd. You'd think he'd have his visor open, or if not, it would be clear. Okay, so um, you have to play with that a bit. Again, surprisingly, we've got quite a lot of ejector pin marks, which are quite deep. You know, I don't know what we're expecting here, but I wasn't expecting to get sort of ejector pin marks quite like this all over it, because although it's the inside of the wing, you're still gonna see it. And like down here, this is the underside of the front wing. We can still see ejector pin marks in all of that and in most of these fairings. Now I know it's on the blind side, and I'm not 100% when this kit came out, because I don't have a date here, yeah, 2012. I'm, I'm surprised there's as many on here as there is for a 2012 kit. I thought Tamiya had stepped up to the board really, and uh, had a lot of their ejector pin areas worked out to move them off of the plant. But there we go, it's probably one of their older ones. <clears throat> and Moving to the more of the internals, obviously it's in the darker colour, so we've got the seat. Nice bucket seat down there, all the details. So we haven't got any flash. Uh, ejector pins, numerous, but in this part, it doesn't matter because they're all gonna be out of the way. Got the underside down here, moving its way around the grills uh, for the cooling system, some of the pipe work, the steering wheels. Uh, as you can see, we've got two steering wheels in here, 10 and 11. So you have your options on those as well. Generally, we're okay. We're not massive, but like down here, again, on the end of these, I assume this is the camera pod, we've actually got ejector pins on the end of them, which is a little bit odd. I thought you wouldn't see that in this day and age. Some nice details though. Okay, so. Next bag up, <clears throat> got the powertrain. So we've actually got the engine itself, got the actual brake drums, uh, all the suspension, as you can imagine. Uh, again, on the blind side of all the suspension, you've got ejector pins, so a little bit disappointing with all of that. But apart from that, very cleanly molded, no sign of, uh, you know, flash or anything else you'd actually worry about. There's certainly never a mismold with Tammy or anything else. So that looks pretty good, no problem with that at all. Now, the tray. So you don't get a base, that's obviously an optional extra if you want the mounting base for this. I thought it was in the box, clearly not. <clears throat> So this is your, the under tray. Again, I'm surprised these ejector pins down here. And I'm surprised by this molding as well. If you catch it in the light, there is a little bit of sinkage in this because this is what it is. It's all coming around here. So this is the top and you're gonna see this. And fair enough, all the ejector pins are in out of the way. Okay, and you know, quite tucked away, quite discreetly, shall we say. Apart from down the middle here, you've got some right down the middle, which I'm surprised this is pushing out. I can only assume they should be in there because you technically wouldn't see it on the blind side. But what I am surprised with is the sink marks in the mold, which is something traditionally you'd never see Tamiya, but that isn't just a case of light. This one over here, you know, 
it's just a little bit it's not not noticeable and I think by the time you put you know a flat black down there you're not going to see it but there is a tiny little bit of sinkage but generally very very nice so there we go this is our RB6 some very nice touches in the kit a little bit problematic. I'm surprised to see the ejector pins all in there on a relatively kit, new kit. It's only three years old after all. Uh, three years ago, we were starting to see things like wing nut wings moving ejector pins off of parts onto the tree a lot more. So I'm surprised Tammy have still got them on there a lot of as well. That's how you say we're not talking one or two, it's covered in them. It's gonna take a little bit of work. Cleaning up those parts I think is gonna pay off though making sure they're polished up, making sure it's got good preparation for the paint down onto it and putting it together. Again, working out the best way to put it on so the decals fit without interrupting or getting in the way of anything else and things like that. Definitely going to be a big fun build to do uh, later on in the summer. I'm really looking forward to it with it.